Hi, it's Rachel here again. I'm going to show you today a um, applique video just quickly with my homespun block of the month. So this is the first block in the series, so from the February issue. And I need to applique my butterfly and then do the embroidery. And then I will be moving on to block two, which is in the March issue. So I'm a little bit behind. Um, so with my applique, I always uh, pin my tip like my butterfly or whatever I'm working on uh, completely and then I start applying even though it's a little bit annoying having all these bits and needle pins that you get um, you know tangled in and stuff like that I still prefer to have it all there pinned so I get the placement right because if I just had that one piece there then it might move slightly and then everything goes skew whiff and off and then the butterfly might not fit. So I prefer to have it all there pinned, ready to go. Some people um, can choose to use, um, there are smaller pins, like these are little, I don't even know if you can see it, it's tiny, little teeny tiny applique pins. But I t for, as I tend to carry projects around the house a little bit, I find that they, fall, they can fall out and then I can't find them. So... Um, I prefer not to use them. I like using the big ones that I can see them if they fall on the ground, even though they're annoying because my thread wraps around them. And the other thing is, this is my messy little pin cushion. It's actually the lid to a jar because I made a jar and then put that on top, but I like to carry this around. I've threaded her through a few needles that I might need ready to go. And I'm just using regular, regular cotton here. Um, to do it. You can use um, applique cotton if you want to. Uh, this is a polyester one. I actually really like this. It never never knots and it's quite strong. But um, So yeah, I just use them in the shades um, that I need for the fabrics. Um, sometimes I'm lazy and I just use an off-white colour. Um, but in this case with the red, with the red parts, I will definitely use a red thread. So what you do with needle turn applique is first of all, you start with what's behind first. You're not going to applique this first. You're going to applique what's behind. And I pick it up. I'm a left-hander, so you'll just do it with your right hand. I, you pick it up. I'll move this out of the way. And with my finger, I'll just... This is fairly simple to do because it's straight. I'll turn it under. And then I'll come up from behind. Here. Like this and then I'll just hold that down and what you do is you just place a little teeny tiny stitch and you just catch it there on the the side and you just come up like this and you go along until you've applied it all and there's no need to go in the part that's under another piece of fabric you don't need to do anything with that you just leave it you don't need to stitch it so you actually need to come down it's kind of hard I've got the tripod in front of me so try not to knock it so just make sure you catch it okay and then yep that's okay so then what I'll do is I'll just here because it's going to be underneath the other fabric I'll just end it off like that and cut it and what I need to do is now turn it around and applique the other side. And then I'll show you how to do this, which is, this is more the interesting, more interesting, interesting shape to see how you do it. So one trick that I do when I'm appliqueing is I push the knee, if I push the pins right in, I tend not to catch onto them so much. So here I'm going to go back down this in this direction. Um, I'm going to start from there. Just make sure you can see. Here. this so you, as you can see I'll just move that out of the way because that's going to annoy me and then I just keep 
Sometimes I use my needle to turn. Sometimes if it's a fairly simple shape, I'll um, just use my fingers. Just flip that over like that. Make sure I turn it enough. And again, I'm just going to end it off on top because it's going to be under the body of the, the butterfly, so you don't need to go down through the back. So I'm done with that. I would actually um, normally go over to the other side and applique the other red bit, but I won't do that now because otherwise the video will be too long. I'm just going to go ahead now and applique this part. So what I would do here is I would start from here. Um, let me just check the placement of it. It's okay, it's a bit longer. So what I'll do is, first of all, I've got my very pale blue here. I've cut them a little bit too long, the threads. So what I'll do is I'll just turn that and I'll make sure it meets up, sorry, just meets up here where the red is. And let me just go underneath here, come up and catch it. And I might put two stitches there just to secure it so that when I come around the other side, it's going to be locked in. So I'll just put another stitch there, like that. So um, I was always fascinated with applique and I, quite a few years ago, a lady in America had asked me to design a growth chart for her which I then subsequently, once I had designed hers and published, um, put it on my blog, I ended up selling a million of them. I couldn't tell you how many growth charts I've made. Um, and so as people started to order the growth charts, they started asking me for all kinds of um, applique shapes. And it was really stressful for me because I wasn't um, an expert applique person. And um, I went to a craft fair here in Italy and um, and there was this shop in Florence called Argo Mago, and they every year they hosted um, Yoko Saito from Japan, who's and the most amazing applique artist, and um, she would come and do courses in Florence. So that year I asked, the next year I asked my husband for my birthday in February if I could go to her course because it was like three hundred and fifty euro for two, a two-day course. And so he and my mother-in-law gave it to me as a gift for my birthday. And um, I went to her course and it just changed my life. I literally felt like I could applique any shape, anything. Really what she taught me, she showed diff some different methods and I just chose what I liked the best and what works for me. And I have not, I have not looked back since. So um, maybe I will be able to help somebody else here. So with these shapes where you have like this sort of scallop sort of shape that comes to a point, you'll notice here what you do is you do a little snip right to the point there. So that way you can easily applique the shape. And when I'm appliquing here, I will go like this with my needle and push it in. And then you continue on as before. And I'll just show you that other so what I, when you come into a point like that, you can also get your needle and go in like this and push, and it helps you push in um, right into the point, so it cleans it. And you could add an extra stitch there just to hold it, and then I'll just get my finger and I'll start. And it, when, when it's curved, I always do just a little bit at a time. I don't try and turn too much. I'll just turn like a small amount like that, and then I'll place a stitch, and then I'll turn the next bit. So that way you can follow the curve fairly easily. So I'll just do a tiny bit there and put another stitch. And then a tiny and a tiny bit here. Maybe I'll do a little bit more there. And if I don't like it, like here, I'm, it's not, I'll just get my needle and I'll go like this and push it in and it makes it better. So that you can see the majority of the turning I, um, the thing about cotton threads is you always get these knots. Um, I'm using my, my finger quite a lot, but um, when I want to uh, neaten it, where it's a little bit more difficult, I'll um, use my needle to, oh, I'm off screen, sorry, to, um, to turn it. 
So I might just finish this bit in the video and then um, that will be it because the other shapes are fairly straightforward. So here I, I don't want to turn too much because then you lose your shape. So you only do a little bit for enough for one stitch. And then here I might even just use my needle and push it in and then place a stitch. So whenever, I think one of the best bits of advice I could give you, whenever you're feeling like it's, you know, you're not quite getting it, it's annoying, it's difficult, um, just do and turn enough under for one stitch and then move on to the next stitch. Don't try and tuck it all under straight away. So here. And again, and then... Here I'm just going to get my needle and go in there like that just to make sure it's tucked in properly. And then before I put my stitch I'm going to tuck it under there. I'll put my needle in there again just to neaten it up and then I'll place my stitch. So that way it holds it. You can see here. Oh, you see, now I'm caught. I'll just, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need it anymore. Just make sure I hold down my piece. So you're going to always hold, keep it in place with your thumb of your other hand. And you know, I'm, I'm not too careful, if, especially if I'm using a similar colour thread, I'm not too worried about my stitches. I mean, there are people who are better at applique than me um, that do totally invisible stitches. Sometimes you can see my stitches, but I don't worry about that too much. Because in, in the, when you have it all done, you're not going to be able to see it. And then I'm making sure I'm holding that flat. I'm just ironing it down. And then I'm only turning a little bit at a time. And I'm nearly done. So here, I need to yeah, lift it just slightly. And I'm not happy there. I'm having a little bit of difficulty. There we go. That's better. like that, just move it around, I'm getting stabbed, and then put that one there, so I just, what I really wanted to do was to show you when I get to the corner here, so when you get to the corner or the point of anything, what you do is you put an extra stitch in, so sorry, that's not the thing, I'm going to put an extra stitch in to hold it, okay, and then I'm going to come around like this, you can see how nice it is, um, and what I do is I'll use my finger first and tuck that in there, and then in this case it's fairly easy, you can just tuck it all in like that, and then use your needle if you need to, but you see I don't need to here, and then just continue on your way. Now. With a curve like this that goes in like that, you put some little snips here and there. So that way um, you can follow the curve easier. Otherwise you won't be able to. So just a few snips here and there. And then continue on. It's fairly easy to do this kind of shape. Oops, got two knots. This could be, oh no, it came out, that could be, could have been a disaster. Again, um, no, I haven't turned that down yet. And then here, I can just use my needle, I actually prefer to use my finger on that kind of there. So you can also, in the same side of the coin, you can use your needle to push it under, but you can also use your needle to pull it out a bit if you're, wanting to correct the shape a little, like this, okay, and then what I'm going to do is use my needle to tuck that under there like that, and then my fingers to help, and then I'll probably use my needle quite a bit here, and just tuck it in, and now you just place your stitches, and you're done. OK, 
Okay, so I think I'll have to end that off, otherwise the video will be too long. But I will be back again. Um, if anybody has any questions, please ask. And if you um, would like to see more videos and be notified, please subscribe. And um, my Instagram account is where my latest works are most up to date. Thank you. Bye.